Imagine standing on the top floor of the tallest skyscraper, looking down at the bustling city below. The entire structure is held together by forces you cannot see, but without them, it would all come crashing down. What are they? Bolted joints, and their strength is beyond what you might believe. Let's see the incredible strength of the simplest bolted joint. Consider a simple bolt, nut, and two plates. The bolt and nut are used to fasten the plates. When the bolt is inserted in the hole and tightened, two things happen. First, the bolt stretches, and its length increases, which applies a tensile force to the bolt. This tensile load is called the preload. Second, the plates are compressed from their original length, generating a clamping force in the plates. These clamping forces are the reason for the strength of the bolts. Under normal circumstances, the clamping force and the preload are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Now consider an external force trying to separate the plates. Two conditions are possible. One, a tensile external load is applied on the plates to separate them. And two, a shear load is applied, which tries to slide one plate over the other. First, let's discuss tensile joints. These joints experience tensile load. If the bolt and nut are not properly fastened but only touch the plates, there is no clamping force present. As a result, the plates separate and the entire external load is applied directly to the bolt. In that case, when the bolt's yield strength is reached, it fails. Now consider the condition when the bolt is tightened such that a preload is present, producing a clamping force that holds the plates together. When an external force is applied, it must first overcome the clamping force. Only after the clamping force is overcome, the bolt begin to bear the external force that tends to separate the plates. If the external force exceeds both the clamping force and the bolt's yield strength, the bolt will fail. For design safety purposes, it is assumed that the external force should not exceed the clamping force of the joint. Now consider the case of a shearing joint. In a shearing joint, Besides the clamping force and preload, another force is present, the frictional force, which resists the sliding of the plates. This frictional force is calculated by a simple formula. It is the product of the coefficient of friction between the two materials and the normal force. For a shearing joint, the external force can only slide the plates when it overcomes the frictional force and the clamping force, and ultimately, the bolt's yield strength. For design purposes, the external force should not exceed the sum of the frictional force and the clamping force of the joint. Now we have to answer two questions. First, how much preload should we apply to a bolted joint? If we apply too little, the joint may loosen under vibrations or external forces. If we apply too much, we risk exceeding the bolt's yield strength, leading to failure. The optimal preload in a bolted joint is generally calculated as a percentage of the bolt's yield strength. The recommended preload is typically 75% of the bolt's yield strength, which can be calculated using the following formula. Here, FP is the preload which we want to calculate. Sigma B is the bolt's yield strength and AB is the minor cross-section area of the bolt. Having answered the question of how much preload should be applied to a bolted joint, Another question arises, how do we apply the correct preload? There are three methods to apply the correct preload to the joint. The first method is the torque method. Engineers use the torque equation to relate the applied torque to the preload force in the bolt. Where T is the applied torque, FP is the desired preload force. D nominal is the nominal bolt diameter. K is the torque coefficient, which depends on lubrication and thread conditions. For example, assume we have an M10 bolt with a nominal diameter of 10 mm and a torque coefficient of 0.2. If our calculated preload is 33,750 newton, then the required torque is. This means that to achieve the correct preload, we should apply 67.5 newton meter of torque using a calibrated torque wrench. However, using a torque wrench to apply preload in a bolted joint is common, but it is not always 100% accurate. Various factors can introduce errors leading to variations in the actual preload achieved. Much of the applied torque is lost to friction between the bolt and plates, and between the nut and plates, resulting in about 25% variation in preload. Another method is the turn of nut method, also known as the part turn method. 
This is a tightening process where a bolt is first snug tightened, and then the nut is rotated by a specific angle to achieve the correct preload. This method ensures that the bolt is properly stretched to provide the required clamping force without relying solely on torque. Unlike the torque method, which is affected by friction, this approach depends on the rotation of the nut to determine preload. However, this method can still produce about 15% variation in preload. The best method to measure the preload of the bolt is the measurement method. In this method, the change in the length of the bolt is measured to calculate the preload. First, the length of the bolt is measured using a vernier caliper before tightening. And again, after tightening, the bolt's length is measured. The difference in length is used to calculate the preload of the bolt. For more precise measurement, an ultrasonic machine can be used instead of a vernier caliper. This method is very accurate and typically produces only minus 2% variation in preload. Now let's discuss another important point, preload loss over time. Preload loss is a major concern in engineering because the preload in a bolt decreases over time. Two key factors contribute to this loss, embedment loss and in-service preload loss. Even the smoothest surfaces have microscopic roughness. When we tighten a bolt, these rough surfaces become compressed, leading to embedment loss, a reduction in preload due to local deformations. This embedment loss can be corrected by retightening the bolt after some time following installation. In-service preload loss is the decrease in preload due to various factors such as relaxation, vibration, and temperature changes. This concludes our discussion on bolted joints, preload application, and preload loss.